Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about homeschool curriculum. So first I'm going to start out by saying that this is our first year officially homeschooling. My son and I did do preschool homeschool for a couple of years before he went off to junior kindergarten. Um, but due to everything that's going on in the world and all that kind of stuff, we've decided to keep him home this year and we've also decided to uh, actually withdraw him from uh, public school and do our own homeschool curriculum. So once I mentioned this on my Facebook page and I talked a little bit about it on Instagram, I have been um, inundated with questions. What curriculum are you doing? Uh, and that kind of thing. So I thought I would just show you what we decided to do this year. So again, this is our first year, um, but I'm a pretty good planner <laughs> and I have um, a friend who lives in British Columbia who's been homeschooling her daughter since the very beginning and she's been a huge help to me. So a lot of the tips that I have, they come from Amelia. So Amelia, if you're watching this, thank you. <laughs> you have made our journey so much easier. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn the camera onto our homeschool binder, and I'm gonna go through the curriculum, talk about why we chose what we chose, um, maybe some of the pros and cons that I'm already seeing, and then how we plan on setting up our days and weeks to come. Okay, I lied. I know I said I was gonna show you the curriculum first, but there's a few things I wanted to mention. First, my son is going into grade three. We are based out of Ontario, Canada. So with regards to homeschooling, make sure that you know the laws and the rules for your district, your area, your province, your state. Uh, before you jump into this. Uh, Ontario is nice and flexible, which we, we love. Um, and again, we're going into grade three here. So a lot of what I'm gonna talk about is probably good for the primary grades, but if you're teaching high school or something like that, you might wanna find another video. So now I'm going to show you our homeschool curriculum. Okay, so my first tip, uh, again, comes from my friend Amelia, and we're working on lighting here. Hopefully you guys can see everything okay but I was looking into getting things bound, um, you know, contacting staples and all that kind of stuff. And she was like, no, 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 do binders. Um, a binder allows you to be able to customize things, move things around, remove them when you need to, add them when you want to. Um, so we did decide to go with a binder. So in terms of grade three curriculum and curriculum in general for the younger kids, the main areas of focus are going to be language arts and math. Those are considered like your bread and butter subjects. And then, you know, science, art, music, social studies, those are all important too, but they may not be everyday components. So I'm gonna guide you, like have you go through um, my learn at home binder or my homeschooling binder. So we've got a couple of um, tools that we're using in terms of planning. Uh, so I've got a general homeschool plan here and again I'm gonna shout out to my friend Amelia because she was the one who really helped me understand how to organize things in terms of weeks. So here in Ontario and in I think most of Canada the general school year is 36 weeks and because my husband is actually a public school teacher we're trying to mirror our schedule to closely mimic his. So when I was trying to figure out like, how do I know how much math to do every week and that kind of thing. She was like, add up the number of exercises, add up the number of units that you have to do for the entire piece of curriculum, the entire year, and then divide it by 36. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that makes so much sense. And so for us, we know that we have to do four exercises of math per week. We have to do what's called one wonder, and I'll go through all of these with you guys. Um, one art project a week, and then I've broken down the nature study as well. So one prompt per week. For social studies, he has to do one to two readings as well as their questions per week. And then we've also separated our language arts curriculum. So what I'm going to do now is just move through this binder uh, so you guys can get an idea of what we're doing this year. So first I'm gonna start with language arts. Um, for us, language arts is gonna be pretty basic. We kind of have a two-pronged approach. So the first one is we're going to focus on novel studies. So every month we've picked out a bunch of novel studies that we're going to tackle. 
Um, and we will read the book together. It's going to be part of our morning routine where I will have my son read some of the book to me and I will read to him. If I can find actual novel studies, uh, you guys need to check out the website Teachers Paid Teachers because they've got tons of resources that you can find on there. Some free, mostly you have to pay for. Um, but you may be able to find novel studies for the books that you'd like to tackle. If I can find novel studies, we'll probably use those to uh, take care of our comprehension questions. I'm also going to pull spelling words from the books that we're reading so we can do spelling tests. And then I plan on doing a little bit of dictation as well because my son struggles a little bit with his penmanship. So we'll pull sentences from the books and we will uh, work on writing those out. So I can cover spelling, comprehension, um, dictation and writing. And, and of course, you know, the actual concepts of, of reading and, and um, introducing new grammar um, and definitions of words. So that tends, that's going to be the main focus. We also invested in a program called Get Published. So once I'm done going through the binder, I'll load up the laptop and I'll show you the two online programs that we invested in. So this is the main bulk of our language arts curriculum. It's going to be the Get Published program that we invested in and novel studies. Um, this is kind of bouncing a little bit, but I'm going to show you how we do plan on doing our actual planning for the week. I'm a big planner and at first I thought, you know, let's plan out the whole year. But that makes absolutely no sense because what if you have sick days? What if you have unexpected events come up? What if you suddenly, in my case, get two or three flats of peaches and you have to can those? So I decided that I'm really only going to plan one or two weeks in advance. Um, and probably Sunday nights will be when I do our planning. So as you can see for math, I know we have to complete exercises one through four in the first week. For social studies or social science, as they call it in this um, kind of planner that I got, you know, I know we have to cover the key terms and Canada in the 1800s. For science, we're going to cover what's called a wonder, and this will be living sunlight. And then for other, we have art and nature study. And then of course, back here in language arts, we've covered our novel, which would be the mouse and the motorcycle and our get published program. We're going to do our first lesson, but that's, that's another tip that I got from Amelia and that I will share with you guys is don't plan out the whole year because something will totally derail it. What if, what if your kiddo struggles with lesson number or exercise number four, and you have to repeat it in the following week, right? So make sure that you're not planning out too far in advance. So, and I just have a bunch of blank ones to fill out as the year goes on. So let's start with science. In terms of science curriculum, I went with Blossom and Root. Blossom and Root is a nature-based secular um, curriculum that you can purchase. It all comes in PDFs. I decided to print it all, mostly in black and white. Uh, they have some pages that are scavenger hunts that I did decide to use my color printer for. Let's see if I can find one. There we are. So you can have an example here. And what's really nice about the Blossom and Root curriculum is it's already divided into 36 what they call wonders or units. So I know that we have to do one a week. <laughs> and that makes planning so much easier that, you know, for our first week of homeschooling, which will mimic the Ontario um, schedule, so starting September 8th, we're going to do Living Sunlight. And for them, they have... Um, multiple ways that you can explore the curriculum. So what they call for the outdoor learners, here's what you can do. For the table lab crowd, for people who like to do more experiments at home, they have suggested exercises. And for the crafts and project oriented families, they also have these. So you can do all three of these or you can do just one. So this is what we decided to do with science. And even though my son is in grade three, this is an American-based curriculum and their year two more closely matched the Ontario curriculum, which is all about plants for science in grade three. And all of the curriculum documents um, for Ontario are available online. So you can take a, a quick look and see what kind of the key points you're supposed to cover for the year and then find a curriculum that matches. With the science curriculum also came a nature study curriculum. This is 
something in an addition that you do not need to do if you want to follow the curriculum for your province or area, but we decided, I mean, gosh, how much fun would this be, right? And so they have four main projects and then they have um, what they consider prompts. And there are, I believe, 32 or 33 of them. And so, you know, the first one, for example, the first nature study prompt is making natural dyes, which sounds like so much fun. So we'll probably use a lot of herbal materials, things like nettles to um, make, we'll probably use yarn, you know, nettle for green, um, you know, onion skins for yellow or turmeric, right? So making natural dyes is a part of that. And the last piece of curriculum that we purchased from Blossom and Root was their art curriculum. For this, I did go for year three. What I liked about it was that it was exploring math and art. And now we do have an additional math curriculum that I will show you, but I loved the idea of combining these subjects and really focusing on the math skills. And so it's all art based. Let's see if I can find the first one. Um, but it still enhances and focuses on, so they have a supply list of things you may or may not need. And so week one is cubes, rectangles, and prisms. And then the art project is actually making, um, you know, well, they have featured artwork that you can look for and then supplies that you'll need to create your own cubes, rectangulars, and prisms. So it's math, but art together, which I thought was really neat. Next, I'm gonna show you social studies. And social studies, I went with Teachers Paid Teachers. Guys, do not underestimate that resource. So as you can see, we opted to piece together our curriculum from multiple different sources. You can buy all-in-one curriculums if you choose. But for, for us, um, you know, the Blossom and Root was excellent. They have science, nature study, art, and language arts, but they don't cover math. So I knew I was going to have to invest in a math curriculum anyway, and they also don't cover the social studies aspects that's covered in Ontario, Canada. So for us, piecing it together made sense. And I also don't want my son spending a ton of time in front of a screen. So we really did go with more hands-on paper curriculum. There are so many options out there. Definitely keep exploring, but I'm just sharing what we're doing this year. So for $10, I was able to get an entire complete social studies curriculum. Uh, there's two different components for it. There uh, for grade three is communities in Canada from 1780 to 1850, and then also living and working in Ontario. And this entire curriculum, PDF format of course, was 10 bucks. How amazing is that? So it has all of the information and then any inferencing and questions. So, you know, we'll easily be able to cover all of the curriculum and his needs. I was really happy with how large the writing space was and how large the font was with this particular one because my son is low vision. So for us, again, screen time, we really try to limit and two font size and large areas for him to work in are really important for my family. So that covers the vast majority of social studies and that's what mostly I have in the binder. So what I'll go to next is our math curriculum. And there's a few other things, you know, in terms of language arts, like I have um, some workbooks that help with paragraph writing. I have these things that are called word ladders, um, you know, and all of this stuff you, you can buy online. I'm going to link a whole bunch of resources in the description, so definitely check them out. They may be Ontario based, but, um, you know, use them. <laughs> they still have really great information. Plus my friend Amelia hooked me up with a homeschool buying co-op. So that way, if you do choose to purchase some curriculums, you get bulk pricing, which is cheaper, which was how we were able to afford those programs that I mentioned that get published. And then we also invested in one called animation ish, which I'll show you in the next segment when we're done looking at the binder. Um, I would never have been able to afford those if I had to buy them outright, but thanks to the homeschooling purchasing co-op, we got a much lower rate. So again, thank you to Amelia, if you're watching this. Finally, math. Now there's lots of options for math. Um, a lot of folks go with Mammoth Math. There are also workbooks. Uh, some folks use Khan Academy. Khan Academy is completely free, guys. It's all online. Uh, so that was a component I didn't really like, and we found that the font was a little bit small. So we decided to go with workbooks. 
Um, and the main reason why we ended up going with Singapore Math, which is what this is, Primary Mathematics, is uh, from a company called Singapore Math, and it doesn't actually say it on here, but that's what we decided to go with. Our main reasoning um, was one, this is a world-renowned math curriculum. Uh, Singapore, as a country, has some of the highest math grades in the world. Um, so we really wanted to do that. My son is, is a pretty smart kiddo, and we wanted an advanced curriculum for him. But the main reason why we decided on Singapore math or the primary mathematics over mammoth math was workspace and font size. It was just that that was the clincher for me. I was deciding between those two, chatting back and forth with Amelia. And in the end, she was she sent me some videos of these workbooks and I was like, done. Like, this is fantastic. They've got lots of space to do work, write out their answers, and the font is nice and big. So he, you know, his eyes won't be strained. And again, with regards to planning out your year, it's, it's excellent. They've got the number of exercises for each unit plus the review. So all I did was add all of these up for both books because there is the 3A and the 3B. And I divided it by 36. <laughs> and so that meant that we have to do one to four or four lessons or four exercises a week. Something to think about in terms of purchasing math curriculum, I felt fairly confident in being able to teach my son the grade three curriculum without needing the parent or teacher's guide. If you've got, um, if you struggle with math yourself or you have an older kiddo um, whose math concepts may be a little bit more difficult for you to figure out how to teach them, you may want to invest in their teacher's workbooks as well. They've got a bunch of different options. You can go bare bones like we did and just get the workbooks. They have teacher's books and I believe they have review guides. So it really just depends on your budget, of course. Um, and I believe Mammoth Math is similar. If you are more the um, unschooling or outdoor education crowd, look into Wild Math as well. Wild Math is really, really neat. It's all about um, finding math in nature and teaching kids that way. Uh, we kind of pondered that one, but um, my son is not super outdoorsy. He likes being outside, but I wouldn't say he'd spend eight hours a day outside. So that is what we have in terms of paper curriculum. So again, language arts, we're doing the novel studies, and then I will show you get published quickly. And for art, science, nature study, we went with Blossom and Root. Social studies we found online through Teachers Paid Teachers. And um, another program we invested in was called Animation-ish. So I'll show you the website for both of those and you can check them out. Animation-ish is another kind of adjunct for art for us. The only thing we haven't covered too, too much is music. And I'm gonna pick my husband's brain about that because he's actually a music teacher. So I'm gonna turn the camera onto the laptop now so you guys can check out both Get Published and Animation-ish. So as promised, I'm sharing with you guys the more online portion of curriculum that we purchased. So we went through, this is a company called Fable Vision Learning, and it's all very creativity based. So the first one that we invested in was something called Animation-ish. And Animation-ish is exactly what it sounds like. It's a program designed to help teach kids uh, the basics in animation, graphic design, uh, you know, basic technologies and that kind of thing. So we thought this would be a perfect addition to our art curriculum. But the one that we're most, pub uh, most excited about, sorry, is Get Published. And Get Published, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Peter H. Reynolds. My son grew up reading his books and we absolutely love them. And so Peter H. Reynolds is the host for this particular program. And it does have, I think it's something like 32 lessons. So again, it works perfectly into, you know, fitting it into a 36 week um, school plan, but he basically guides students uh, all the way through the idea of plot development, storyboard sequencing, look at this, character development, um, even pitching, branding, and then you can, he actually guides you all the way through the editing process and publishing process. And my son absolutely loves to write. He's already written multiple novels, short stories, He's constantly writing stories. So we thought this would be a great way to add some depth to his stories and learn how, you know, to focus on things like more detailed plots, character development, and maybe even get a book or two published. Like, how cool would that be? So these programs, 
through Fable Vision Learning are actually quite expensive um, and really sort of out of our reach. But then my friend Amelia told me about the um, Homeschool Buyers Co-op. And I'll make sure I'll have all these links below. But this is where you can look for bulk pricing on some of your homeschool curriculum. So yeah, see there, Get Published is right there. So we've already purchased Get Published, but I can show you guys through the Homeschool Buyers Co-op, and there's no cost to joining this, um, it's $49. And I believe on the website, it was about 160. Huge difference in price. Animation-ish, the cost was only slightly reduced. I think it was like by $5, because it's 25 on their website, um, and it was 19.99 through this. Uh, I mentioned um, Mammoth Math. And so they've got Mammoth Math on here too, all the different workbooks. So keep in mind that most of these things that you're gonna be buying online are PDFs. So you will have to take into consideration printing costs, but this helps to make things more accessible. So hopefully this gives you guys kind of a neat idea of what we're doing online. You know, uh, my son was introduced to games like Prodigy and stuff like that, which we'll do every now and again. Uh, but our preference and focus was definitely on paper curriculum uh, and workbooks. So I know this was a particularly long video. I don't usually do them this long, but I do hope that it answers some of the questions that I've been receiving about what we're doing this year with regards to homeschooling. Uh, I hope it sparks your imagination or it gets you thinking about different ways of providing education or different types of curriculum that are out there. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below. I will do my best to include as many links as possible in the description. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs, Nail Charles Homestead, and Corrine's Homeschool, uh, signing off.